What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cinema Trip Reviews. And as you can see, I am back at the Hack the Movies video store with yeah. Tony from Hack the Movies. Yeah, should we say? Dabba D. <laughs> should we say Fred Flintstone? So, as you can probably guess by now, we are talking about the Flintstones from 1994. This yep. movie is directed by Brian Levant, who directed Beethoven, which mm -hmm. I was never really a fan of Beethoven. Oh, I liked the Beethoven. At the time, I I'd probably watch it now and be like, these suck. But at the time, I was a big I just, Beethoven fan. I was fan. never into Beethoven. Yeah. Jingle All the Way, mm -hmm. which I love Jingle All the Way. We actually reviewed that here past December for yeah. you know holiday movie months. They did Are We There Are We There Yet and Snow Dogs, which I like Are We There Yet, I guess. It's been a while since I've seen it. And I've seen Snow Dogs sucks. I, I did not see like Snow Dogs. But Brian Levant, uh, as a gift a while back, uh, my co-host Casey bought me his book. Now his book is actually under you and I didn't feel like messing up the case. For the love of God, don't touch anything underneath oh, the case. No. It's a pain in the oh, ass. No. But luckily the book came with a holographic thing of the cover and he even autographed it to me. Tony, toys are us. Enjoy Brian Levant. He's a big toy guy, which that was is very what nice of him. made him a good fit for this film. Uh, this did come out on May 23rd, 1994, 30 years ago. I saw this in theaters. Did you? I yes. was one year old at this no, point. I was there. I was there. He's as old the as I am. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what What are your memories with not only the Flintstones, but also this movie here? Well, I remember seeing reruns of Flintstones as a kid. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, this is early, well, I guess you were, weren't around for most of it, but early 90s, Jurassic Park, Power Rangers. Yes. Dinosaurs were everywhere. I'm the perfect age for all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a good time to be a dinosaur kid in the early 90s. Um, so yeah, you know, this is, uh, people forget the early 90s, they were remaking TV shows. Like, they were either rebooting them or making cartoons live action. Yep. This was one of them. Uh, Adam's Family was before that. Ironically, Mission Impossible is in that era of time, and it's still going. Review coming soon for Mission <laughs> yes. Impossible. Uh, people forget, like, yeah, the first Mission Impossible movie was jumping on the trend of doing old TV shows yeah. as movies. Uh, it was just the most successful out of all of them. So I remember all the advertisements for this coming out. Like, it's like, you, you're three. I was talking about that recently. I feel like Aladdin might be the first movie I remember seeing in theaters. Like, I, this is when I started having, like, memories. Yeah. Like, that. Like anything before that, who knows. Uh, but 1994, I'm starting to remember a lot. And I'm getting, like, hyped up for the Flintstones. There was a lot that came out that year. Uh, but, yeah, being a dinosaur kid, liking the cartoons, knowing who the actors were, because yeah. I've seen them in other things. It was just firing that all helps. cylinders for me as a young child. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think um, my best friend at the time and his mom took us out to see it. Uh, and we had a gay old time, as the song goes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, mine's pretty much the same. I grew up watching Cartoon mm. Network all the time, and they would always have the Flintstones, the mm. Jetsons, all the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Uh, and Flintstones was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. No. And so immediately upon knowing that there was a movie, I had to go out and see it. Mm. And I would say this one, along with the sequel, Viva Rock Vegas, yeah. it was called. I, that's one I don't remember really at all now, like because mm. I've seen that probably less than this one. But when I was a kid, I used to watch these back to back. Yeah. So coming back to it all these years later, it's amazing to see all the practical effects and all the trouble they went through to create mm. bedrock for this movie. And the early CGI. And the early C, oh my God. By the same Way people early CGI. The, by yeah. the same people who did Jurassic Park, ILM. Yeah. Uh, the good thing is these are cartoony dinosaurs, so they didn't have to look quite realistic. Yeah. Uh, so they actually don't you look You don't bad. see them a ton. Like the CGI dinosaurs like Dino. Yeah. And you rarely see the cat. And the, like, well, the because at the, end. the cat, I believe, is one of the first uh, CGI creations with fur. Yeah. And fur was really hard so to do. As far as fur is always hard, but like in the 90s, like this era, it's super hard. So I think that's why they use him very yeah. sparingly. And Dino is very rough at certain points. Yes. But you can tell they only made like just the head yeah. and like the hands and stuff yeah. that they would put. I mean, like, if you go back and watch first Jurassic Park, like the daylight scenes, you notice the dinosaurs are a little too smooth. Yeah. Fine for the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they still, still hold up. up. It yeah. still holds up, but if you watch it like on Blu-ray and stuff, you're like, oh yeah, something. that looks a little smoother than I remember as a kid. <laughs> yeah, and this movie was famously produced by Steven Spielrock, as it says at the beginning of the movie here. <laughs> Spielrock presents. Yeah. Um, and apparently he had a lot of say in this movie. Yeah, this is Universal and Amblin Entertainment. Amblin. Yeah. 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 
So apparently he had a lot of say in this movie. Mm. He wanted John Goodman from the start to yes. be Fred. And John he, Goodman didn't want to do it. <laughs> no, he didn't because he didn't see himself in that position. He apparently yeah. grew up liking the Flintstones and whatnot. Mm. But didn't uh, Spielberg produce Arachnophobia? Because that's where they worked in. They worked yes. together on that previously. Yes, yes. Right there, Arachnophobia, yes. Yeah. And uh, that's where he got the idea. Like, this dude looks like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> I think he could easily be Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Um, so there really wasn't too many other people that were in the running for that role. Because, Danny DeVito, that was... Well, that was for Barney. They wanted oh, Danny DeVito as Barney. Okay. And DeVito thought he was too, like, gruff to be yeah, Barney. Yeah, he wouldn't have worked as so Barney. So he actually recommended Rick Moranis for the role. Yeah. And that's when they am um, getting Rick Moranis. And it's weird seeing Elizabeth Perkins as Wilma in this because I specifically know her from Weeds. Yeah. I don't know if you watched Weeds or not. I didn't. She is such a bitch in that show. <laughs> She's such a terrible person in that show. I think pretty much everyone in this is extremely well cast, looks just like the show. And then there's Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> that is the one casting decision that does not hold up. Yeah, not at all. I mean, she has the laugh down. Not, and that's, not... that's apparently how she got the job, too, is because she perfect the the betty laugh hey you could have you could have dubbed in the laugh you could have yeah you're saying it doesn't hold up I mean, uh, you chose the right time to do rosie adano as the yeah. as betty but i'm just saying you're saying it doesn't hold up i'm letting you know i don't think that worked at the time <laughs> yeah i mean it's fine it's whatever it's it fine does, even if you don't know who rosie o'donnell yeah. is it does kind of seem out of place given the rest of the cast yeah but she's not bad because Betty doesn't really do much in this movie. Just be sad. Just be sad. I mean, Wilma, she definitely has more to do, but even she doesn't have much to mm. do in this movie. Um, but easily the most impressive aspect is lengths they went through to actually create Bedrock and yeah. everything. Because I, I feel like every scene, I was constantly amazed mm. by them, just some new thing that they were using. Like, yeah. They would have the like a bird and as, as a vending machine taking the bottle caps off that the That was cool. So I, like, yeah, this job they... sucks. Yeah, <laughs> which... It's funny because that was the humor from the show. I mean, like, I know people who don't like this movie think it's stupid. I'm like, well, I mean, it is adapting the show. If you got a problem with the show, that's a whole different thing. I'm like, but this is very in spirit with the cartoon. Oh, yeah. Which was stupid as hell. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I love looking at all the puns, which was always a fun part of the show. It was yeah. all the prehistoric they puns. They had some of them in, like, the credits and stuff, too. And like, yeah. when they go to the movies, yeah. like, coming soon is, like, Tar Wars. Yeah, Tar George Lucas' is Tar, Wars. Tar Wars. Or, like, what was it? Gorge Lucas. Or Gorge something. Lucas, yes. Yeah. And my favorite pun at the time because i remember being a kid in the theater seeing it and they all thought it was hilarious when they go to the playground and it's jurassic, jurassic park. park yeah <laughs> and it's like hilarious. the same font pretty yeah much, I thought that was great <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're lucky it was amblin and yeah. universal you're not getting away with that yeah another welcome surprise in this movie was our friend kyle mclaughlin yes i for some reason kept thinking he was in the sequel no but no it was in this one and that first scene that comes up i was like my boy kyle mclaughlin <laughs> like a year or two removed from Twin Peaks yes. too. So he's fresh off of Dale Cooper. But still with his super way too black plastically gelled hair. <laughs> he kept like, I, I do like Twin Peaks, but at some point I'm like, man, that is not your hair. It looks like <laughs> a helmet. Like, it looks like a yeah, helmet. Yeah, it looks like how much gel are you using, Cooper? Yeah, and he plays Cliff Vandercave. You do have Elizabeth Taylor mm -hmm. as Pearl's mom. Uh, was her last theatrical And Pearl, film. Wilma's mom. Yeah. Yeah, it was his, her last acting role. Mm -hmm. And Harvey Corman, who I didn't even know was in this movie he voiced dick to bird and yeah. i know him from a lot of just mel brooks movies yes from back and of course the star wars holiday special see i haven't seen the star wars holiday special <laughs> but good. i didn't even know he was in that he plays like three different characters in that <laughs> <laughs> is he one of the wookies because i've seen no 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 yeah you can tell it's him and well, the assistant there. sharon stone played by halle berry I totally forgot that that was the name, and they name dropped that. And yeah. it apparently, was supposed to be Sharon Stone. Yeah, they, they tried to hire Sharon Stone to and play it, Sharon Stone. It was like a scheduling thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I was like, that would have been perfect. Yeah. But I think it's even better that you have Holly Berry in one of her first <laughs> roles, I guess, as Sharon Stone. <laughs> Because you have like all these other made up names that are yeah. punny and whatnot, but like you have just Sharon Stone in there. Like, That's good. And even like I just imagine them thinking like, can we come up with something else? And like, <laughs> nah, just keep Sharon Stone. Nah, it's gonna Sharon be even Stone. funnier. So Bedrock took two months to build and cost ten percent of the budget. I actually thought it would have been a lot more, given mm. the not just the building Bedrock, but all the props. Yeah. And whatnot as well. And the Jim Henson Creature Shop. That was part mm. of like creating the props. They only had 12 weeks to create 20 different creatures. Jesus Christ. And that's not very long, I feel, especially with, how, not. with how like detailed these different creatures are. Yeah. It's amazing. 
And uh, John Landis had uncredited reshoot, did like directing for uncredited reshoots for this movie. I didn't hear, I didn't see that in the trivia. Yeah, huh. and that was you no know, old friend of Steven Spielberg. Well, he caused a lot of problems for Steven Spielberg, so I could see why he was uncredited. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get into the whole. We're not going to get into that. Uh, uh, and whatnot. We talked about that a little bit in the Poltergeist yeah. episode. When you said he was, un- <laughs> when you said he was uncredited, I'm like, yeah, at that time, that was a that good was time to best. uncredit him. Yeah. <laughs> And boy, do we have a lot of cameos in this Yes. Movie. And I, I didn't remember any of these because I was too young to really know who any of yeah. these people were, obviously. We had Richard Mole in there, who yeah. recently passed, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. So R.I.P. Richard Mole. Jay Leno, who played like the, the TV host. I forget what the name of the I forget show. what his I name was, my too, nose, yeah. So we'll come up on that. Yeah. And this one, I actually had to try to dive in. And there's no evidence itself by watching it. But Sam Raimi is in the movie. And he is in that the TV show they watch, the reenactment. Yeah. He plays Kyle McLaughlin's character. Was that him? But the way that the TV is in the movie, yeah. it's like stuff stuff around the screen. So you yeah. can't, it's blurred out, so you can't see who it is. I couldn't But tell. apparently, like just I've found looked at different websites and everybody says it's Sam Raimi. Like mm. he came in and, so I don't know if it's actual fact or not, but everything I find Maybe it it's says one it's of Sam those Raimi. Urban myths that haven't been debunked yet. Yeah. But know? I could totally see Sam Raimi doing something. Yeah, like he's that, done weird cameos at before. That time. Yeah. Mel Blanc was credited for doing the voice of Dino in this movie. But it was just recordings. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. it was the old Dino recording yeah. from the show, but it was five years after his death, mm. <laughs> which was pretty cool. Because yeah. I saw the name in the credits. It was like, Mel Block was still alive no. like, doing this? <laughs> nope, he was not. <laughs> Hanna-Barbera were in the movie, apparently. They had cameos as well. Oh, I heard about that, yeah. The woman that played Wilma had a cameo in the movie. Mm. So they yeah. pretty much brought everybody they could. Back, whoever was still alive. Whoever was still alive at there. that time to come back from the movie. Yeah. Um, the B-52s. They did yeah. part of the soundtrack, and they were also I think in they're the, the BC-52s BC in there. BC-52s, <laughs> and they did, like, the Bedrock Twitch. Yeah. And I guess at the beginning of the movie where, you know, Fred and Barney are jamming yeah. out on the radio, that is the original version from the show. Mm. And then, of course, later in the movie, you have the b They do their version. version. And we didn't really talk about John Goodman. He did, he is fantastic in the role. Yeah. He was going to do something different for it, and Steven Spielberg he was like, like no, no, you have to do the cartoon version. You have to do version. the Fred voice for this movie. And Rick Moranis was really good as Barney. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish we still got more Rick Moranis, man. I know, I know he did a ton of voice roles like later in his life. Yeah. But it would have been nice to see him back in some more movies I guess. and stuff. That's yeah. fine. I mean, I'm glad he's sitting out of the Ghostbusters movies. You know, he's, yeah, those the, are, one, he's the one person. I, I didn't even see the last two, so I'm not going to comment I, on I them. I envy you. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> I'm not even going to comment on them. <laughs> so Steven Spielrock presents... And this goes right into the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have the day of the quarry, Slayton Company, and you get introduced to the villains real quick. Mm. Kyle McLaughlin and Holly Berry mm. as Cliff Vandercleef, Vander Cave. Yeah. I keep wanting to say Vandercleef for some reason. <laughs> and uh, Sharon Stone. Yeah. And they are looking for some dimwit to, you know, complete their schemes. Yeah, they need like a patsy for uh, this like embezzlement exactly. scheme that they're doing. They don't go into the whole embezzlement scheme right now, but this is one weird way to kick off the movie. You expect yeah. to see this kind of scene after you're introduced to the main characters, mm-hmm. like maybe the first day at the job. Or I something. get that, but I think this is a good lead up to what we're about to see. Yeah, but I also feel like the beginning is a little jumbled in my opinion, just because it has that scene. Yeah. And then you have the, the recreation of the whole Flintstones opening of the yeah, or of the part of it show. they do the second half afterwards towards the end of the movie yeah but stuff. it's just like who's the person and then it cuts to fred flintstone with the yabba dabba do they blow the, the the bird's tail yeah and everything skating down the dinosaur going into the car and apparently they had him on like a wench and they like filmed it they did it in yeah. reverse with him going out of the car yeah that makes everything. sense yeah but it was awesome seeing him like pedal and, the, and i guess they had the wheels of the the vehicle were like oil drums yeah and i think they had like, like golf cart motors in them yeah, yeah which, they look really cool though yeah the, especially like the souped up ones later in the movie i like that it looks how it should like if you put the cartoon in real life this is what it would look exactly. like and even like sound effects and all yeah you get the old sound effects yeah. from the old tv show and stuff in here complete opening intro they even them going to the movies as you notice for some reason Betty and Barney are not in the car with them like they are in the original ones. Yeah. Probably because they didn't have enough room to fit anybody <laughs> in those cars at the time. But that's the opening of the movie because it zooms into the screen and then you get the real Yeah, and then you the watch movie. the movie. Yeah, it is a little like, wait, is this a movie? It's a little a jarring <laughs> because, yeah, you go into the actual movie itself, but you kind of had the start of the movie I know. with the villains and stuff. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of like back and forth. I don't know. It just felt weird to me um, watching it. 
I love this whole introduction into the world, though, with all the CG dinosaurs running around. Like the plane, the open top plane. Yeah, the plane. The, the open pterodactyl. Top. And over there is the Grand Canyon in five million years. But <laughs> <laughs> well, they have like the dinosaurs swimming in the water and everything. More yep. than I, when I put this on, the I haven't seen this movie in a very long time. Yeah, I haven't either, man. And when I put it on, I'm like, man, I forgot how much of the... I know they focus on bedrock, but I forgot that little intro where they show, like, everything. Everything. Because yeah. it's, like, all desert and rock and stuff, and so you go up over, it's, like, yeah. all green grass yeah. and, like, just <laughs> the houses and stuff. And I didn't mention, like, the very cartoony smoke ring that Holly yeah. blows, and it turns into the dollars. So, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that's... that's and me being ring. a kid, I was like, how'd she get to do that? <laughs> Like, wow, I see people smoke because it's the 90s and parents still do it around kids. Not mine, but like, yeah. that's the thing you don't see anymore. Just no. adults smoking right in front of kids. Exactly. <laughs> and I like how they switched the Universal logo to Universe Shell. Yeah, that was fun. Everything. Like, they're really buying into yeah. everything. You get introduced to Fred and Barney, mm -hmm. who are on their way to work. They're listening to the Bedrock Twitch. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like the radio broadcast. They're talking about the weather. Yeah. And it's like four, uh, 20 percent meteor showers. And they're like a lava flow close highway 81 forever. <laughs> <laughs> so they start talking about how Barney is super excited to be a father. Yes. He's going to be having a son. And, and you find out that Fred loaned him the money because he's such a good friend. He wanted him to have that kid. Yeah, what a good friend of Fred. Yeah, <laughs> Barney's going to have to repay him one day. One day. But you find out that uh, Wilma doesn't know about it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, are you afraid of Wilma? He's like, no, I'm the king of the castle or whatever. He's like, don't worry, I won't tell her. He's like, thanks, Barney. <laughs> and like they're driving by all the houses and they have like the big lobster lawn yeah. mowers and everything. I love that, yeah. Wilma finds out about the missing money. Mm-hmm. Like, immediately. You expect this to come back, like, later yeah. in the movie. It's, like, as soon as he gets home. <laughs> but then he explains why. Yeah. Oh, but, but I love that she's like, we need a new garbage disposal. I'm like, our garbage disposal's fine. It's so gross, dude. <laughs> like, this pig this that's pig dying. Just burping and stuff. And he, like, reaches into its mouth and pulls out that fork. <laughs> and I love when he goes, spin it up, and it shoots his watch out. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, like, the iconic, like, him walking through and Dino just rushing him immediately. Yeah. Like, down, Dino, down. <laughs> I'm home! <laughs> So she finds out about the money, but she's totally cool with it because mm. it's for a good cause. Yeah. It's not like he went and just blew it on another one of his schemes. So you can tell that. No, no. She's like, okay, this one, you get a pass. Yeah. yeah. You can tell Fred and Barney are out trying to come up with schemes on the regular, wasting mm. all their money. <laughs> Find out, I like the scene of the bus in town. Mm. Like every, all the passengers have to push the bus. <laughs> it almost makes no sense to get in a vehicle. Like, why wouldn't because you just what? walk at that point? <laughs> But you go to the adoption agency, you find mm. out they're adopting. Cause... Yeah, I love this. <laughs> Where they, they, they show them the orangutan, and they're just like, like we're going to love it. Oh, no, that's for we'll them. Love it like it's our own. <laughs> it's like, no, this is for them. It's for the Hendersons. <laughs> and they're yeah, just like, they the wait. Hendersons. And they're wearing like a suit and stuff. And there's even like a, an orangutan working at yeah. Slate and Company, too. <laughs> I think there's even Neanderthals, too. Yeah, it's like, we don't hang around with them. When, they're not welcome to the club anymore, or something he said at one point. But you get to meet Bam Bam who was raised by mastodons mm -hmm. and he just looks like a wild a yeah. child from out in the wild like the long hair he's just yeah. all dirty he can only say bam bam like in the cartoon what's it short, short for bam 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 <laughs> And they never explain ever, even in the cartoons, like why he's just super strong. Yeah. And I question later in the movie, like <laughs> he has super strength. You think you could pos possibly get out of the situation. Well, he's also an idiot. <laughs> this is true. He finally learns his words by the end of the yeah. movie. You're right. He just runs away from him mm. after just bonking Barney on the head. Like, I'm your dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you just have a mon one of the first montages of the movie. And uh, it's just Bam Bam raising all hell yeah. everywhere. And then you just have kind of a sweet moment with like her reading a bedtime story to mm. him and such. But he's just out there just raising all hell. Like, how are you going to control just like a little caveman? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are all cavemen, I guess. But <laughs> I guess, but there, I guess there's more civilized cavemen yeah. than others. Uh, there's rich cavemen, as you find out, yeah. because uh, when you find when you meet Pearl, Wilma's mm. mom, she wanted him to marry uh, 
what was his name like edgar firestone i think so or something yes. like the inventor of the wheel <laughs> yeah which i'm sure that was all explored in the prequel viva rock vegas <laughs> i forgot it was a prequel yeah it's a prequel yeah. i totally forgot about it was about that. like how they got married or something like that see it's been so long i don't even remember that aspect of the story <laughs> so you get to see the bolaramo as you know fred and barney mm. are bowlers and mm. apparently the scene wasn't even going to be in the movie yeah, but they wanted to show his famous bowling. Yeah, yeah. little twinkle toes. <laughs> <he calls them. laughs> yeah, love the sound effects in there, yeah. and I love how like just the pins just blow up too on impact. They don't <laughs> even just get knocked over. He throws them so hard they blow up. Plus, it, you kind of need this part for what Barney's about to do because it plays into what happens. <laughs> Barney, because he's so grateful for Fred, and, you know, giving mm. him the money to get Bam Bam and all that. He reads him a, po a poem about Fred that he wrote. Yeah. And everybody just doesn't know why he's doing this because Fred doesn't want him just out there saying what he did yeah. for him. And this is probably one of my favorite gags in the movie. Like in the middle of while he's reading it, Fred's just like, oh. And then the very next scene, he's like blubbering like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh. <laughs> but by the time he's done, just everybody's just like so weirded out that some dude just got up to read a poem yeah. about his best friend. <laughs> And they're like, oh, well, that's over now. Let's just have our reward. It's yeah. just the biggest mug of beer you have ever seen in your life. And I have so many questions on how they drink it all. Because once it gets down to a certain point, you're going to have to, like, put somebody in head first to drink the rest of it. Unless you just fill it up again. Like, Cartoon how, logic. Or big ass straws. I don't know how you're going to do that. Um, but like Richard Mole was one of those buddies yeah. in the lodge. They don't really drop the name of the lodge. It's like on their uniforms mm. for the bowling league, I guess. But they have like the big square hats and yeah, everything. I love they even that. do like the waka waka woo. <laughs> waka waka wee. Fred sneaks in the home. He doesn't want to wake him up. Doesn't want to wake him up. Yeah. He ends up waking him up anyway because of Dino. And he yeah. ends up tripping on stuff. You find out her mother's there. And mm. her mother is a battle axe. She yeah. hates Fred. She can't stand him. She cannot stand him. <laughs> and she just makes every fat joke in the book yeah. about him. That's the only insult she really has other yeah. than just him being a loser. But it's like, dude owns a house. Yeah. He owns a car. He has a steady job. Yeah. Like, he's not really a loser. You could be a loser back then and have all those things. Like I'm, Every time I watch Married with Children, I'm like, they're so poor. And I'm like, and yet I couldn't afford that house. Yeah, I couldn't afford a house <laughs> like that. And you have children, too. Like, yeah. <laughs> on a shoe on a shoe salesman's salary. Right. I, like, I don't think Fred's that much of a loser. And he's like, I'm yeah. going to be something someday, Wilma. You watch. Yeah. And it's like, I, I think you're fine, Fred. <laughs> I think you're kind of made. You have a nice family. You have a house. Yeah. You have a whole whole ass like homeless shelter they go to later in the <laughs> That's movie. That's right. Like there's people worse off than you, yeah. Fred. Next day at the quarry during lunch break, Kyle McLaughlin comes out and announces they are having an executive placement program Ooh. where everybody, they're going to be giving aptitude tests and who, you know, whoever scores the, the most on that, they're going to be given the role of executive vice president of uh -huh. the company. And they're going to get a huge pay increase they're going to be a big shot in bedrock the problem is fred's an idiot fred's an idiot <laughs> but as you come to find out fred is studying all he can he's putting yeah. his all into it even though he's doing so wilma and betty just don't believe in him at yeah. all you know they're hanging up clothes and just like, <laughs> yeah i just don't see it happening yeah. <laughs> he is fred after all <laughs> it's just kind of sex like it's your wife man you yeah. think she would support you in some way but she doesn't have any faith in him whatsoever but at least he's trying mm -hmm. uh they all take the aptitude tests and he's like before we have any questions i'm gonna get to this and like the, the ape like raises his hand yeah. he's like no no questions put it down. <laughs> Fred is going through a rough time during this test. Yeah, he's like struggling. <laughs> he's like sweating profusely <laughs> while he's doing it. Like me when I took any test in school. Any test ever. And I ended up failing all of them. <laughs> I was terrible at tests. <laughs> yeah. But Barney, it seems like he's doing well and you can notice Fred's kind of going through it. So mm. the time comes, they have to place their test just like it's like high school. You have to place them in like these packets yeah. and put them on into piles and whatnot. So Barney pretends to drop them because this is his way of paying Fred back for giving yeah. them money. He's going to switch tests with him, so hopefully Fred does better so he can get that job and become the big shot so he can yeah. impress his mother-in-law in the yeah. end, I guess. He ends up getting the job, and he's so super happy, and like maybe Barney's kind of like, eh, maybe I kind of could have been in that role. Maybe I should. Yeah, I mean, he, he ends up getting more bitter as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I think at first he's just more happy for Fred because he yeah. feels good. But yeah, because the bad thing hasn't happened yet to him. Yeah. And but. I love I absolutely love 
every single time in this movie when they have like a poster yeah. or the paper that comes out right after he gets the job, they use the cartoon. Yeah, version. it's just the cartoon image. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> snazzy new job. He gets a snazzy new look. He has like this uh, like zebra print suit yeah. with a tie and everything. Um, but I like the, just more of the house stuff, like the the elephant shower. Yeah. And, the and mammoth. The mammoth, sorry, not elephants, elephants aren't around yet. All right, mammoth, yes. And I always wonder, like, how do they figure out the whole, the hot and cold situation when it comes? <laughs> That's to a that? good question. <laughs> <laughs> He's the executive vice president. He gets his own office, mm -hmm. and he gets his own secretary, who is Sharon Stone. Yes, and she is very, very upfront that she will do anything for him. Yeah. She's not really being subtle at all. Not subtle at all. And it was even getting to the point where I was like, this is a kid's movie, lady. <laughs> Jesus, chill. I think it's the first time I've ever seen Halle Berry in a thing. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because she didn't do much after that until Swordfish, right? The Bull well, X-Men. Oh, X-Men. Yeah, true. She well, no, she did a bunch of stuff after that. It just wasn't stuff that I was watching. And then watching. Catwoman. Right? <laughs> and then Catwoman. The famous Catwoman. The famous Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> they start giving him forms to sign. Mm-hmm. And, and he's not reading any not of reading them. Not reading any of them. He's not taking the advice his, of his His the... bird is even trying to help him out. Yeah. And he just won't listen to his him. His bird like, went to school and everything. Yeah. He knows exactly what to do. He's been through so many, like, different generations yeah. of that job. So he knows <laughs> what to do. And Fred's like, I'm the vice president. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> he lets everyone know what he's the vice president of. Yeah. He opens up the window. I'm the vice president. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you find out Vanderclave is setting Fred up for embezzlement. Yes. He's going to end up keeping all the money. Mm -hmm. but it's like he's gonna keep all the money but he's still giving fred a ton of money also to keep his mind off of what he's signing so yeah. it's like he is kind of giving fred the money to spend in a way so and i guess, I guess mr. Is kind of embezzling mr slate is just not paying attention to anything <laughs> you don't see mr slate until the very end of the movie yeah. like, where is this dude uh no no you see him in the minute in the middle when he like is presenting oh, at the board yeah, meeting yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, board yeah. meeting yeah i forgot about that yeah yeah but this yeah. is what he's told what his first assignment is yes he has to fire, fire Barney because Barney got the lowest score on the test. <laughs> That's when Barney gets a little bitter. It's like, ah. Oh. Because it should have been Fred. So yeah. it's like, either way, probably, I mean, one of them was going to get fired either way. He yeah. was going to get the worst on the test. Yeah. He doesn't want to talk to Barney much on the way home because he's so sad. And he yeah. even makes a point of it. Like, you're usually talking to my ear off and you haven't said anything. <laughs> and he gets home and they throw him a surprise party, uh. which is the worst because he yeah. has to fire his best friend now. Yeah. And even Barney tries to give him like a brand new suitcase. Mm. He's like, I can't accept this, I man. Can't accept I can't do this. You can't afford it. And he's like, sure I can. He's like, not anymore. You can't. <laughs> it's like, dude, you, you probably could have waited maybe a day or yeah. so after the party. You didn't have to do this at the party. Yeah. Because like, I'm firing you, Barney. <laughs> he just comes out with it. I'm firing you, Barney. In front of everybody. And Barney kind of takes it well at first because he knows it wasn't like Fred isn't it wasn't Fred's decision. He yeah. was forced to do it's like, it. It's all yeah. right. I can start new. I can get a new yeah. job. You know, this is a fresh start. Yeah. He's like, you know, it's good for you to look on the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> See, you have your sense of humor about these things. <laughs> Wilma and Betty decide to go shopping because, mm. you know, he's getting all this money now. Yeah. So Wilma can afford some new stuff. She's going to start to charge it to the card. Mm. And Bam Bam gets loose and breaks all the crystal in the store. And Betty's just like, no! <laughs> yeah, it's super zoomed in, no! So, like, how is she going to pay for all of this? She's going to have to pay Wilma back at some point. Yeah, and then you cut to the board meeting with Mr. Slate. Mm. And Kyle McLaughlin's character is coming up with this new plan to, you know, make the process fast yeah steam powered he's a, basically it's conveyor a conveyor belts yeah steam it's basically belts, like yeah. a joke about like industrialization yeah and, and they're pretty much gonna lay off everybody yeah and just fred's listening to all this and just not processing at all yeah what's going on well his whole thing is like he thinks the little model is what they're actually building he pulls a zoolander yeah <laughs> it's like how are they gonna fit in this tiny house <laughs> there's <laughs> a center for ants <laughs> <laughs> but they want to implement uh steam power conveyor pellets and he keeps saying a couple times that it's gonna like improve the uh, like mm. quadruple their pro their oh, their that's funny because slate's just like we have to do all this like it'll quadruple he's like oh okay i'll miss them because <laughs> <laughs> yeah he goes on a whole rant about like yeah. i you know i've been here for these workers all the time like i'm not yeah. just gonna you know give in i'm you know, like i'm gonna do what's best for them yeah. you, know, you know i'm gonna miss them <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> wilma has to pay for the damages mm. they're at jurassic park <laughs> yeah <laughs> the kids they're at jurassic park you're right they <laughs> the are literally jurassic at jurassic park, park. 
Uh, and then you have the pterodactyl scene. Yeah, it's funny because like you don't want a bird to shit on your car, and of course it's like a giant one. <laughs> Everybody's just running for their lives, and this just the shadow of the pterodactyl going over the town, and it just shits <laughs> everywhere. That was good. So this is where Fred is starting to question, signing all these different documents without looking at them. He's like, you know, I'm the, kind of the boss. Maybe I should start reading these things, and that's yeah. when she really isn't subtle with it. She starts like she putting like, her tits in his face. Climbs up on the desk. And then yeah. like Wilma walks in too. It's and like, she's it's watching like your, <laughs> your wife, your wife's like, yeah, my wife. <laughs> oh, hi Wilma. <laughs> and Wilma comes to tell Fred that <laughs> Betty and Barney have to rent out their house because they don't have any money. Yeah. Barney is out of his job. They're dealing with this, you know, crystal fiasco that Bam Bam created. Mm. So they have to move in with them. <laughs> He's like, where are they going to stay? And she's like, well, <laughs> this just causes all, all kinds of problems because they're starting to enjoy their new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And this is just another montage of the movie where Fred and Wilma are starting to just get extravagant things. They're buying new cars. They're even building huge extensions on their house. Yes. And then Barney is like taking up odd jobs. Like he's a crash test dummy and (laughs) shit. Yeah. (laughs) So you see how like, they're just like, they're getting better and they're getting worse. (laughs) Yeah. And like they're, he's like wearing fancy suits, and she's yeah. getting like all these fancy dresses and stuff. I do like the black and white zebra Fred outfit. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they're not even doing anything at their own house at yeah. this point. Like she's like doing aerobics or something <laughs> with an aerobics instructor, and he's just like in a hammock. And Barney's <laughs> mowing his lawn, and Betty's doing their laundry. Like, yeah. he's like come on, guys, you should be just doing everything for you. They haven't hard enough as it is. Yeah. Uh, so Betty and Barney start resenting Fred and Wilma, mm-hmm. and. I mean, Betty comes to Barney about it because he's just had the crash test. He's like in a sling and yeah. he's like, oh, you're starting to feel it too, huh? <laughs> um, so Vander Cave tricks Fred into signing the docs and giving his friends a vacation at oh, this point. He's extended like, vacation. Yeah, he's like, this is what you wanted. You know, you, you guys get work too hard. You want vacation. You know, this will give him an extended vacation. All you yeah. have to do is sign here. Yep. <laughs> and it turns out. <laughs> Well, they go to dinner the other the next night. They're going to this big extravagant, you know, mm. dinner. The B fifty twos are playing. The, the, the BC fifty twos. BC fifty twos. I keep forgetting about. You're going to confuse our audience. Bedrock eyeing the uh, every name <laughs> that they have. But they take them to dinner, and they even have like a dance scene, which is like I guess they just did it within the Adams family. A yeah, couple years, I get. Yeah, years that later, I they probably wanted to capitalize on. Not as memorable as the Mamushka. No, not um, at all because all, it, it doesn't last long at all. Yeah, but like again, they're now they're literally dancing and flaunting in front of yeah. Barney and yeah, yeah yeah it's coming to a head at this point yeah. they're saying Barney's gonna be along soon because he just got a new job and yeah. they have to wait till he gets off work to join him and it turns out Barney is a bus boy at that restaurant yeah he's like you're a bus boy and it's like it's an honest living <laughs> <laughs> but he sees on the TV that Fred laid off all of his Everyone. friends and everybody at the job. Because yeah. even Kyle McLaughlin just tells him, like, don't worry, I'll give you the credit, all right? <laughs> Make sure they know it was me. But don't worry, I'll give you the credit. And they're like, we hate Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> Other than John Travolta in our last review. Yes. He is a believable bad guy in he this is one. He's very such good a bad slimy guy in this. bad guy in he this He made one. an action figure for him. Really? <laughs> yeah. When this movie came out, there was, a, there was an action figure. I need to get him. me a, a Dale Cooper yeah. action figure and a, what is his name? Cliff Vandercave yeah. action figure. <laughs> it really comes to a head at this point. Yeah. Uh, Fred and Wilma, well, not Wilma, more so Fred is really, really acting like a snob at mm. this point. Even, even like, kind of throws Wilma under the bus. Yeah. Like, You've been wanting him out the whole time. Or She's like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> but she's even like, Fred, like, they're our friends. Stop, man. Mm. And even even when they get home, they're packing up their stuff and they're leaving. Yeah. When was like, are you not going to stop them? He's like, let them leave. They're fine. Yeah. I can find new friends. We're yeah. successful now. And then Wilma has had enough. She's just like, I can do without this, without this. And she finally, she breaks the TV. She's breaking everything. She's like, well, I guess I don't need all this dishes since we're not going to have friends over anymore. Yeah, and he's like, whatever, I don't care. As soon as she gets the TV, he's like, no, not the TV. <laughs> not the TV, please don't do it. <laughs> it's a big, like, I can't imagine how heavy that TV is because it's yeah. just stone and she still pushes it over. She's so mad. You know, you know one Hanna-Barbera Flintstones thing they didn't do? They didn't have a scene of Fred running and running past the same lamp over and over and over oh, again. Because yeah, I, totally I was thinking the Hanna Barbera, they would just recycle the back, so Fred would be running and it'd just be the same background the same thing on a like loop. Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah. 
That was the one thing that they were missing. <laughs> I want to see a scene of John Goodman running next to the same lamp over they and over. They should have did that. <laughs> so Betty and Barney are living in the middle of nowhere mm. now. And like I like how she's sweeping up. And she just like sweeps up all the dirt and rocks. And she's like, well, I guess I'm not going to place it amongst the rest of the dirt and rocks. <laughs> but he's like making these big ass eggs. Yeah. And you have like this... Brontos Brontosaurus, I guess it is, yeah. come down. And he's like, where'd you get these eggs from? <laughs> he's like, here you go. <laughs> but I like, they have their whole living room set up just out in the middle of just nowhere. out in the... <laughs> their couch and everything. Wilma ends up leaving Fred at this point. She goes to her mother's. And he's like, fine, I don't need you either. I, I got myself. I'm a success. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> success has just completely gone to his head at this point. <laughs> Things couldn't get worse for fred because you think he he's kind of feeling bad because soon as mm. like they leave and wilma leaves he's you can see he kind of has a different expression he's like yeah. man maybe i kind of fucked up here a little yeah. bit. so he goes to work and everybody's like picketing and super <laughs> mad at him they're like surrounding his car in his new nice car his new nice car <laughs> that he just got and everything so it's even yeah. adding insult to injury at this point yeah and he's going to try and fix it. Yeah, that's mm. what he says. And that's when he starts going to the file room, and then he really finds out like what he's been signing this whole yeah. time. So he confronts Vandercave. He's like, you've just been embezzling this whole time. He's like, yeah, but you signed everything. Like, this is your <laughs> fault. You've been buying all these extravagant things. Like, yeah. It's kind of hard to prove it was me, man. <laughs> <laughs> So Fred is a fugitive. Yeah. This, we get fugitive Fred. He even has the fake beard and the <laughs> fake trench coat. Is this when they're watching Jay Leno on TV and it's the reenactment? Bedrock's Most Wanted yeah. is what it is. Like, tonight on Bedrock's Most Wanted, we have Fred Ye Flintstone. Yabba dabba dabba. And then the mom's just I'm like. I'm embezzling. <laughs> like the, uh, what is it, Pearl? She's just like, how could you marry that man? She's like, that's not Fred. <laughs> I'm embezzling. It's just so I'm embezzling. I like the actress who Sharon Stone looks nothing like Halle Berry nothing at all. Like her. Mr. Flintstone, what are you doing? I'm embezzling. I'm shocked. Yeah, but, 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 but. Wilma goes home because. Obviously, Fred's not there. He's on the run. Mm. He's been gone a little while. Betty goes back and sees Wilma because she's missed her friend. And the mm. whole time, they reconcile. And Fred's on the run, and he ends up going to, like we talked about, the homeless shelter of yeah. all the uh, the layoffs from the Slade and Company. Yep. And that he, old guy he's talking to looks so familiar, and I forgot to look up who I, he was. I think it's Jonathan Winters. I okay. that's his name. If I, because I have it written down. I can't here. remember what he's from. He's like an old comedian, I guess. Yeah, he looks super familiar. He does. Yeah. He's like, if we catch that Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> and then who rats him out? That damn pig. Because they the end up replacing the garbage pig, disposal the garbage, pig that they replaced. <laughs> to get a new skinny pig for underneath the garbage disposal. It's like, Fred Fred no! Fred Fred no! No! He's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> damn pig. <laughs> and it goes zero to 100 real quick because yeah. they're going to lynch Fred in the middle of bed. Yeah. But then Barney shows up. Like, Barney has a new job. Yeah. And I like, he's like, what's going on? And it's like, they're lynching me. And he's like, oh. So I got raspberry. <laughs> like, he just doesn't care anymore. <laughs> Did you notice his uh, snow cone trucks theme? What was it? Oh, it was the Jetson theme. When it comes in, yeah. But I like, they're like, you know him. It's like, yeah, you can say this whole thing is my fault. Like, oh, good. We're going to hang you too. Like, I'm glad we didn't make a mistake. <laughs> We're going to hang both of you. <laughs> I do like Fred assumes that Barney showed up to help him. He's like, no, I saw a big crowd and thought I could sell some snow cones. <laughs> He's like, figures, it's my best day. Like, can't be like this every day because everybody just keeps <laughs> He's asking, like, you have this place, like, check the back of the truck yeah. while they're about to hang. <laughs> <laughs> He's still trying to sell the ice cream. <laughs> it's that type of humor I love in this shit. It's like, I love that kind of dark humor. I don't know why it. that's reminded me of, uh, Seinfeld, where he talks about how he like fought the burglar while driving the bus, and he's like, "Oh I, my god!" He's like, "I kicked him off at the next stop," and they're like, "You kept making all the stops. stops." He's like, "They kept ringing the bell." It's like, you're like Batman. He's like, "You're right. I am like Batman." <laughs> but like, well, it was an intense situation, but he was still doing job. Much like Barney is about to get killed. He's like, "Oh yeah, check that. I think we have that. <laughs> <laughs> check the back." Wilma has the idea of how to, you know, clear Fred's name, and yeah. that is the dicta bird in his yes. office. Yes, because it's supposed to dictate and you know remember everything. Yeah. So she sneaks into the office, and while mm. she's in the office, that's whenever you see uh, 
Kyle McLaughlin, Holly Berry. Yeah. Holly Berry discovers she only has one plane ticket. He's like, I was going to send for you later when I got to Rockapoco. Yeah, Rockapoco. He's like, it was. It's going to be less. In, it's going to be less suspicious if we go. Yeah. You know, separately or whatnot. And she's like, this guy. And she's on to him. She's like, oh, he's screwing me over. Yeah, and yeah. that's when they see them running out with the dicta bird. Yeah. And of course they go to, they somehow know where to go and yeah. straight to town square. And they end up just like, listen, gather around. He has a story to tell, <laughs> but first he has to make a uh, Fred apologize and say, he's sorry. Yeah. You haven't, you haven't treated me like a person, <laughs> like a citizen. You treat me like nothing. You don't let me help or anything. Yeah. And he wants him to say, I'm sorry. He's sorry. He's like, I don't think anybody can hear you on the back. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Damn it. So he ends up telling everybody the whole story, yeah. but I mean, it's still not the cops. Yeah. <laughs> so they go home and, this, you think it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> Kyle McLaughlin kidnaps <laughs> Pebbles, Pebbles and Bam Bam. Who are both played by twins. We forgot to mention that earlier. They're both They're both sets. played by twins. Also, I forgot to mention the other scene. I've, I'm sorry. The one scene I loved was when Bam Bam is like playing with Pebbles on the swing. Higher. And in the background, and Pebbles just go doing She's like, higher, Bam Bam, higher. <laughs> just to, and it's clearly a dummy. Like, just going over and over and again. But yeah, they're all kidnapped. Yeah, it was like... Except for the grandma who's just tied up. But you think, like, maybe he could just be like, yeah, I'm just going to go on the run and get out of here yeah. ASAP now. But he's like, no, I'm going to go out of my way to kidnap their kids. He had the money and the ticket. He exactly. could have just gotten out. He could have just left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, I'm just going to draw this out even further. <laughs> he tells him where to meet him and everything. And I just don't understand. This is the part I don't get is like, why can't Bam Bam, since he's so strong, just like beat them up or break out of these straps that he's in, like tied up in or whatnot? Because he's breaking everything else yeah. during the course of the movie. It's a good question. I just don't get it. They it's, forgot he has a super strength, it, I guess. God, this movie is not accurate or consistent. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I want realism from the Flintstones and consistency. <laughs> <laughs> they go meet up at the quarry because that's where they're supposed to meet yeah. him at. And they go to give the bird back yeah. first. And the bird's walking across. He's like, I should have signed with Disney. Disney. This would have never happened. <laughs> I should have signed with Disney. They never would have allowed this sort of thing to happen. <sighs> Barney uses the catapult to get up there because... Mm. Kyle McLaughlin has them on the steam power conveyor yeah. belt that's going to their inevitable death. Not only did he yeah. kidnap the kids, he's going to kill the kids in the process, even though he got the bird back. Yeah. Um, and he pushes the lever. So while Fred is trying to turn the lever to stop the machine, Barney gets on the catapult, I guess it is, to mm. launch himself up to take care of the kids. <laughs> and he still gets himself knocked out. Fred at Mac, like gets the idea because he destroyed the model earlier in the movie. That With the rock, was. yeah. So that glad that came out of place. Like, I'm going to move the catapult to destroy the machine. Yeah, and Polly Berry ends up turning on Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah. Kyle McLaughlin has them, you know, at a standoff again. Yeah. Oh, with a gun. Which is like sling like three pebbles. slingshots with pebbles connected. Because the bird runs behind him. And it's like, I don't think that's going to do anything to Fred. Maybe not even the bird. I don't think that's going to do anything to anybody. And she like knocks him in the head with like her purse yeah. or whatever. Well, all the shells fall the shells. out with just like their money. Yeah. Yeah. I think at this point, Barney saves the kids. Yes. And then, like, the rock mixes with water or something. And well, he tries to get away, and that's when the yeah. bowling thing comes up again. Yo, he yeah. He does... toes and yeah. He <laughs> knocks Kyle McLaughlin over. And then he gets covered in this new liquid that turns to stone. Yeah, because the, the steam machine broke, the yeah. water poured out, and then, like, when the cops come, the stones fall. And yeah. Whatnot. And it makes concrete, and it yeah. falls on Kyle McLaughlin, and he's just, like, in that statue pose. And I love Mr. Slate being like, what happened to this? He's like, what? He's like, I love it. <laughs> this liquid that turns into rock, I'm going to name it after my daughter, Concretia. <laughs> Called Concrete. <laughs> and, you know, the dude that plays Mr. Slate is fine. Yeah. They should have got Gilbert Gottfried. Oh, that would have been good. That would have been even better. I got to work with Flintstone, Gilbert. Flintstone, what are you doing? I got to work with Gilbert I know. twice, and he was the nicest guy ever. I'm jealous, man. Yeah. And I, I think he would have been an amazing Mr. Slate if they yeah. would have got him. That would have been pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's like, you made concrete. This would, <laughs> you know, this could be revolution. This could get us out of the Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they know what age they're in. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is like, they're so aware of what's going on at that time period for some reason. But yeah, he's like, I'll make you the vice president or the executive president of the concrete division. Yeah. Like, you know what? 
I just want to go back to well, my old job. Well, before that, he jumps up in the air and then he freezes. And I like that he like wiggles his toes to like, go back yeah, down. Like, he's like flying. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I want to. Yeah, I want to go back. That was too much responsibility. But even Barney's is like, but you earned it this time. <laughs> <laughs> like, why not? Yeah. I just want to go back and work with my friends, man. Yeah. I'm more comfortable. I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> And Miss Stone gets arrested and admits to being a very, very bad girl. Yeah. You know, she just couldn't resist the opportunity yeah. to just be so upfront again. <laughs> I just think at this point, I just think she has the thing for Fred. Yeah. She might have genuinely <laughs> she like, him. like I think Mr. Flintstone's smarter than he seems. Yeah. He's like, come on now. <laughs> I don't think so. He might be lucky. He's not smart. <laughs> <laughs> so he offers them the job. He doesn't take it. So hmm. he's like, he gets the vacation for his buddies. Yeah. And he even gets the ketchup packets and the lunch that, that uh, Barney and the guys want all the time. Uh, and they also bring all of his friends back that got laid off. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems like it's a happy ending. The movie is ending at the drive-in. At the drive-in. And then we get the rest of the intro for uh, Flintstone. Yeah, where they go back to the house and, yeah. like, throws the cat outside. Well, before that, they go to, like, the, the restaurant. They put the big rack of The ribs. rack of ribs. And he's like, oh, boy. The face he makes is, oh, boy. And he, like, leads over yeah the, they do the cat thing twice where he throws the cat out and it jumps back in the window <laughs> yes and of course you have him banging on the door the Wilma! Wilma! <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great note to go out on yeah. i love how they c- recreated the intro and the outro yeah and, and you know at the places where they're supposed to be in the yeah. movie and everything it, you can tell there is just so much love put into this movie yeah l- like i said time. he's got in that book he has he shows his whole personal flintstones collection mm-hmm. so yeah this was something that really meant a lot to brian he like this was like kind of his dream project i guess yeah and, and he got can to do it tell he got to do it twice yeah true he did direct the second one he did they just could not convince any of the damn original cast to he come got back. the well, oh god that stupid green alien alan cumming played him oh, oh those, kazoo. those are episodes kazoo of the flintstone or, or something yeah. i hate a kazoo i didn't episodes. like him either never he liked his character because he was just an asshole all i didn't the like time. him i'm like this I'm like this is i feel like the jetsons is interfering with flintstones here with yeah. this stupid shit i mean they did have them meet up at one point yeah i don't have to watch that i don't think i've ever seen that but yeah you can tell there is so much love in this movie it doesn't look like they they spared no expense (laughs) really because even they got a lot of money from jurassic park they yeah right (laughs) like the next year literally they're like we're gonna sink some of this money back into the flintstones and make a good kids movie because even like the minor things like in the background or whatever is just given so much love and detail and I, i just love everything that went into it by the way Speaking of Spielberg and Amblin, I feel like that's a nice rack. Because, like, Spielberg's been making, like, a bunch of movies that are, mm-hmm. like, meant for your granddad. Yeah. That don't make any money. No one sees mm-hmm. them. And like, how is he still doing this? It's like, because he owns Amblin. He could just put out one Jurassic World, and that could probably fund, like, five of... Like, his movies don't have to do well at the box office. He's just doing that for him. Yeah. Because he knows he could put his name on a Transformers or something, and it'll make a shit ton of <laughs> money. That producer. Steve yeah, Spielberg yeah, produced. yeah. <laughs> People are like, oh, they're doing another Jurassic World? Like, yeah, they're probably going to do a lot more because yeah. that makes them a lot of money. <laughs> I did see the one, the one of the later ones he did, like kind of his autobiographical one in a way. I that heard that one was good. Well, David yeah. Lynch. Yeah, and, but and, then, and then he'll slap his name on something like fucking Ready Player One. Or it's like, he did West Side Story, too, and I was like, I don't have any interest in watching West Side yeah, Story. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just, well, Ready Player One, I feel like he directed when the actors were there, everything else was a cartoon. I don't think he had a lot to do with that. Yeah, but yeah. True. Yeah. But like, even going back to this, like Jurassic Park did so well, he was able to also do like Schindler's. He's able to do like smaller stuff too, mm-hmm. because he produces stuff like this, which probably makes a ton of money. Yeah. Um, which I think this did well. I remember it being mm-hmm. pretty big enough to get a sequel. It's weird. They never tried it with Jetsons. It is weird. That was bizarre. Especially after the success of this one, they would have tried the yeah. Jetsons. Because even Scooby-Doo wasn't until like 10 years later. Yeah, that. Scooby-Doo took a while. It yeah, took a while later. And yeah. the CGI in that was still rough yeah. with Scooby. But Jetsons would have felt like a slam dunk after this, right? This movie made money, right? Maybe it would have just been harder to accomplish I'm with looking the way the Jetsons are. Because the floating buildings up. and the... How much money did this make? Hold on. A few moments later. Jesus, budget $46 million. Now, double and then subtract, for, yeah. but it's made $341 million. Jesus. I don't know if that's just for inflation or whatever. Oh, my God. This made a shit ton of... Oh, they had the... T- okay. They had a tie-in with McDonald's. 
Oh, okay. The McDonald's toys were there, and I remember. See, like, I didn't know they had McDonald's. So, toys. like in the '90s, like I remember, like I started paying attention to like movies that are tied in with like fast food things. You know, you get the happy oh, meal, yeah. like, like oh, I want to see that movie. Can we go to McDonald's so I can get like the the toy, the yeah. toys? And Burger King did the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's how that as a kid in the '90s, that's how you knew a movie was going to be good. It's like, well, do they have a McDonald's or Burger King toy line? Like <laughs> they do. Like that's going to be the most important movie ever made. Let's go. That's how. That's how you got your news as a kid, kind of. Yeah. Unless you're going to the movies and seeing a trailer or a poster. Yeah, or but um, yeah, it's weird. I, Jetsons would have felt like it was the next thing. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't think there was a market for it. Because I mean, at least with this, you could capitalize off a of Jurassic Park with the dinosaurs. And yeah, stuff. but I mean, after. Fucking Flintstones, you think of Jetsons. True. And should've they even been. had the, the ice cream truck yeah. with the tone of the Jetsons in there. You could've yeah, kind of they should have did Jetsons. Could have had some Flintstones Easter eggs or something in there somewhere. I would have loved a 90s Jetsons. Instead, we got a 90s Lost in Space. Wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen that one. I can't wait. to. Re- I'm going to review that one day. <laughs> <laughs> isn't Matt LeBlanc Yeah. In that one? <laughs> they try to make Matt LeBlanc an action hero. <laughs> yeah. And a few off. years later, like you're the boyfriend in Charlie's Angels. You're not a you're not a leading action <laughs> hero. Sorry, <laughs> you tried. You're just Joey. <laughs> but yeah, the, the Flintstones. I actually had a really good time. Yeah, I had a movie. lot of fun revisiting it. Like anything negative about this movie can be said for the cartoon. So if you're not in. To the cartoon, and maybe it's, oh, yeah. it's been a while since I watched the cartoon. Maybe it is a little dated. It's just an extended version of the cartoon. Really. Yeah, it's it pretty little... much that. From yes. what I understand, there is, because it's been so long since I've revisited the cartoon. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, there is an episode where, like, Barney becomes, like, the boss. Yes. And then, you know, it's kind of like the same story. In yeah, they kind of reversed it. Yeah. But, yeah, it's um, it's a big, it's like a, I never owned it on VHS until recently. Uh, so it was one of those movies I always wanted to watch and I just never had it around. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was at, it's on Netflix right now at the yep. time of this recording, but no, I kind of like this whole era because it was kind of cool. Cause in the nineties, I, I had cable in the nineties. So I got all the extra channels that would replay old things. And yeah. at the same time we were getting these movies like Adam's family, Flintstones, Beverly Hillbillies, oh, for Jim Varney's. Beverly yeah. With Hillbillies. Jim Varney, the Brady budge movie in the nineties. So yeah. it was, it was a cool time to be a kid and see like the old stuff and the new stuff. Like I would watch like the I six, never, like just oh, thinking about, it, I never realized how many of those like remakes yeah. came out in the nineties and they were doing it. Like, I mean, it, it fizzled out. I mean, they still occasionally do it, but it yeah. it fizzled out by like the early two thousands. Like you had like Charlie's Angels, Scooby Doo, and then I know like two thousand six, you had like Miami Vice. But like it wasn't yeah. like as a comment of a thing. But like the nineties, it became like this every old TV. They yeah. even made fun of it in Charlie's Angels in the beginning. They're on the plane and it's showing a TJ Hooker movie. He's like, <laughs> oh, another movie based off an old TV show. <laughs> Dukes of Hazard. That was another oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie though, because just rewatching, I felt like I had a big ass smile on my face. Yeah. Every single scene, because every scene had just something original about it. Mm. They weren't reusing props really yeah. much at all. It was always something different. Either like the big ass glasses they're using, like yeah. uh, Kyle McLaughlin has when he's drinking like a martini. <laughs> it's like this huge ass crystal glass and everything. Yeah. Um, it's just like those little details and you can just tell that there is so much love put into this movie. And mm. like Steven Spielberg was like, yeah, we're going to use some of this Jurassic money to yeah. go in here. And I really respect that they didn't like, we found this new technology. We're going to really use CG more. Mm. No, we're going to actually do. Actually I think, practical. I mean, I think they were limited. They couldn't do as much as they wanted. Yeah. To. But yeah. I'm glad that they actually went in like with practical effects in mind for yeah. the majority of everything. Yeah. Um, but this movie was, was a blast to actually go back and rewatch mm. now uh, since it's been so long. It still holds up. It still holds up. Definitely holds up. Definitely mm. holds up. And I think that's due to the practical effects <laughs> instead of just CGI yeah. everything. Um, and I think, I don't know if you could, do you think you could do a Flintstones live action thing now? Like, do you think it's too far away from the source? Yeah. Like, I, feel like I don't more... know. Cause again, like I was that generation of reruns. Mm-hmm. So young kids, like, my generation, like, we were able to watch, like, old Bugs Bunny, so that's why we like Space Jam and stuff. I think kids these days, unless their parents are showing them, they're not watching a lot of this older stuff. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, the original Flintstone generation, they're way too old for yeah. Flint. They're not going to care. 
uh, our generation, we're going to be like, I like the John Goodwin one. I don't really care about seeing the new one. Yeah, I don't think you could do it. I mean, you could. They probably will do it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it'll be as successful. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's a lot of that older stuff that it's going to be hard to remake because yeah. just the kids don't have the access there, to those old shows. There are or some franchises anymore. that are like I guess like maybe you get lucky because they are kind of small, so you can reboot them, and there's less of a rabbit fan base and stuff. Like getting back to Lost in Space, I love the Netflix Lost in Space. Yeah, because the old show, everyone kind of like I loved it, but no one really cared. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there wasn't anything to ruin, but um. There are other franchises that evolve with the times. Flintstones is right in there. It's like he kind of had to be there and witness it or yeah. re-experience it. And I, I just don't think it'll I don't think it'll do well. I do know that they had a like a animated reboot in the mm. works for like 10 years with yeah. Seth MacFarlane. He was gonna do yeah. it. And then I guess you never heard about it ever again. But I remember hearing about it like every year yeah. for a while, like through these news networks, like And IGN I'm sure or I guess they still do animated movies. Oh yeah, they still do animated movies because there was like I think they put like the wrestlers. WWE was doing those weird cartoons With where it was like, and yeah, stuff. it was like, but like Roman Reigns was like the Jetsons or something. <laughs> yeah. So there was, yeah. The Undertaker is in one of the Flintstones cartoons. Um, yeah. So they'll probably just stick to animated stuff. To be honest, I yeah. don't think they're ever going to try another probably live be the best action route movie. to go. <laughs> you kind of said everything you really needed to say in Flintstones. Yeah, one. not going to really be much you can say in a movie that you can't do. And honestly, the RP. second one was probably for the one guy that went, "Where's the Great Kazoo?" And they're like, "All right, we'll do one movie with the Great Kazoo." Yeah, and it's like, "All right, we got it." Bedrock's boring. We got to take it somewhere <laughs> new and refreshing. Viva Rock Vegas. Uh, but yeah, no, live action Jetsons movie. That should have been the thing. That should have been number one priority. Yes. Right after this came out. Yes. Instead of the sequel. Um, but yeah, I'd say revisit it. Do a double feature of Adam's Family and Flintstone. That's a fun time. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. Would you say it's a, a buy it, rent it, or miss it? Here, honey. Ooh, uh, it depends on who you are. If you like Flintstones, I'd say buy it. If you're just like, oh, I want to check this out. I'd say it's either a rent or a buy. I can't decide on which one. I personally would buy it. Yeah. Personally, I would yeah. add this one to my collection. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen the Flintstones, I highly recommend yes. checking out the Flintstones. Yes. It's a great time. It was one of those movies I would always watch as a kid along with. It kind of reminded me of like Dennis the Menace in a way because I watched Dennis another the old the thing time. that was remake. Yeah. yeah. Another yeah. remake that happened yeah. in the 90s. Yeah. Um, that was one I would always watch as a kid. Even mm. the sequel that went straight to move like. Oh, yeah. Uh, VHS with Don Rickles. Yeah. And the dude from uh, The Naked Gun. And I forget Susan his name. from Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. She was Dennis's she, mom. Dennis's mom. That's yeah. how long, because I haven't seen that one. Yeah. We recently rewatched Dennis the Menace. Um, I, I, I had to rewatch both when I was uh, still working on Randall Reviews because they reviewed it and I had to edit the episode. So I just watched both of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a third one that was actually made before the first theatrical film. It was like a direct to video one, Dennis the Menace in Dinosaur World or something like that. I don't remember that one. Yeah, it was like they find fossils <laughs> in his house. I don't know, whatever. Uh, Richie Rich? That's another adaption. That's what I'm What is it? Richie Rich. Richie Rich, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Casper. Casper. There's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell, I never realized that. Leave it to Beaver? Yeah. Was Shooter McGavin is the dad in there? <laughs> that one wasn't as popular. No, that's one I remember seeing, though. But yeah. Flintstones, great time. Highly recommend it. Any other uh, thoughts on the Flintstones here, Tony? Fred? I tried to think of a pun. <laughs> Fred? <laughs> I tried to think of a pun, and I couldn't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> Insert dinosaur joke here. What do you call a blind dinosaur? I don't know. What do you call a blind dinosaur? Do you think he saw us? But yeah, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. And of course. Thank you for having me in your store. Oh, yes. Yes, it's a great store. I don't have much Flintstone things. It was kind of uncomfortable watching these movies like up in the corner, like on a screen <laughs> for like four and a half hours. <laughs> oh, I forgot. We didn't have a dinosaur on set. Rawr. Rawr. Dinosaur. <laughs> That's a 90s dinosaur. That's a 90 but... dinosaurs movie. Not as popular as Jurassic Park, unfortunately. It's not? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you telling? I love this movie. But yeah, that is the show for today. Once again, thank you, Tony, for being on. Yep. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. As always, check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Cinema Troop Reviews. Also, check us out wherever you get your podcasts. Drop in and leave us a good review there. And we'll see everybody next time.